Hey guys, I've got an hour of time alone in my house, so I figured it would be a good time to resume my Dominions campaign. You guys seem to enjoy it last time, which is good. Even if you don't really like playing a game like this yourself, you might appreciate viewing it. So now, we've just got to figure out where I left off here. I know we just begun fighting the Vanier, to these red guys here, the red flag. I know we also discovered that we've got enemies approaching from the south. And quite a few of them too, 50 enemies. And then of course we're being encroached upon by the sea. But these sea people, they don't seem to be really, you know, posturing on our borders of forces, unlike these land armies are. So I think it would be best to focus on them. So let's check the capital real quick and find out what we're doing here. We've got most of our guys in research. Nightworm is summoning an archbishop, which is good. We've got a couple of archbishops here reanimating horses, which is always nice. We've also almost depleted all the corpses in this capital. So these archbishops, I might soon relocate one of them to one of his other provinces that's got more corpses in it, like for example this guy. 142 corpses. Let's see if we've got enough troops for Lepolov here. We're certainly developing some cavalry, and we're going to need it too for those other troublesome land armies on the border. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the troops I've got. I'll set these guys to guard the commander. And I'll just march with what I've got down here towards these uh, teal guys. And luckily this commander can travel two tiles at a time. We've got more mound kings over here. And there's just a whole heap of just generic crap units here that I'll just get on the front lines as well. Zombies, oh, they're so useless. Ghouls aren't bad. Tell you what, put the zombies back. As always, I like to get the ghouls to um, attack the rearmost enemies. They can loop around. The knights, I'm going to assign to Suleiman. And basically all I want Suleiman to do is I want Sul Suleiman to just wait here meet up with his other commander, Lepolov, and give him his knights. Plague Stink, he can get on the front lines here. This guy, Bane Wound. He's got an okay army, but it's kind of depleted. I'm going to set him here as well. We've got no money to spend on defense. That province will just have to hang out for a while. Nardimu. He can just stay here until more units spawn in in that location. Grave Shree. He's already scanned this province and found no, um, no magic sites. So I'm going to move him on. He's just going to keep wandering around for all provinces. These two guys, Heartless and Mort. Yep, they've been commanded to go down here, which is fine. I don't think the Vanir are going to give us that much trouble right now. I'm more worried about these purple, uh, not purple, these teal guys. The question is, we've got a huge army in the sea and most of it's really good. I'm going to get this army here, this first army with all the knights. I want him back on the land. And uh, Antema here, I'm just going to get him to pillage. I need money, so I'm just going to kill the populace and get money. The other good thing about pillaging is a, uh, is a, a province of no population is earning no money. You get money per turn, and that's based off the population. Our dominion, because we're undead and stuff, it kills off the population. But the good news is that provinces that have zero population in them, are very unattractive targets for enemies. 
So if we can reduce the population of all these sea provinces, then it's going to be unlikely that this sea man here is going to want them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on depleting all the population of these sea provinces so I can sort of forget about them. And that will leave a bit of a buffer too. So if the sea guy decides he wants to come in and take my capital, well, then I'm going to have some warning from these buffer states here. Anyway, I think that's enough for this turn. I'll just check the research real quick. We're still progressing down enchantment, which is fine. But we may want to consider some conjuration. We've got a fair few um, spells here, which would be good for us in the conjuration tree. Stuff like these elite units, for example, the Wailing Lady, it's special to our faction. It's kind of like a Banshee. The other one I'd like to get is the... Hmm. I've got construction magic, so some of these things like Earth Elementals would be really nice. So what I might do is queue up some um, Conjuration. And another thing I'd like to get is some Construction. Construction allows you not only to build these very elite kind of units like giant um, golems, and a very nice one right at the end of the tree, the Poison Golem. It also allows you to construct magic items. And what I'd like to do is start equipping my commanders and stuff with magic items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up a few levels of construction as well. And then I'm just going to continue on with the enchantment for a while until it's maxed out. So yeah, let's end the turn. So one of Bane Wound's die, uh, units crippled? What? Okay, so a guy just perished during a march. March, That's fine. Oh, we've killed 580 people. That should net about 58 gold. Oh yeah, 55 gold. Good. There was a battle. We'll just check that out quick. It's these horses that kicked our ass before. But we've got a much better army this time. This should be an easy win. Yep. We've got a couple of ghouls retreating, but that's fine. We won the battle. That's good. So we'll just quickly go to that province. We've got plenty of unrest, which is nice. You know what? There's barely anyone in this province. Let's just get pillaging it. Why the hell not? It's only producing nine income. We've got all these blokes here, right on the border of the teal guys. Leponlove has arrived. While he's progressing through these lands, we may as well get assigning troops to him. Good. We'll leave the zombies there, they're pretty useless. Gifrin, what's he doing? He just made a temple last turn. We'll get him reanimating Long Dead. There's not really many corpses here, but he can just stay there for now. These two guys, what are they doing? We're just going to get these guys up to the front. Sometimes the minion management in this game can be a little bit tedious. Not right now at this stage, but once you've got let's say half the map, managing all, this, all these units every turn can really take some time. Grave Shree just arrived in this province, we'll get him searching. We've got this guy here. See, he's a archbishop. We're going to put him in a place with a lot of corpses. I think this province is a good candidate. Stick him down there. Nightworm. He can continue summoning Dusk Elders for now. I would really want to get more Dusk Elders and get them researching so I can ramp up the research. 
Mogger Crew, or whatever his name is. He's bringing our good horses back to land. I'll just scoop up these long dead. May as well scoop up these zombies as well while I'm here. Get him on land. This guy's pillaging, that's good. He can stay there and pillage to his heart's content. We've got a bishop. Yeah, just a standard bishop here. Going to get him... Get him reanimating. He can work on long dead. We've got all these dead units accumulating everywhere. We're going to have to send a commander through to scoop them up. I guess Plague Stink can do that job. Tell him to stay behind. Give him a small bodyguard contingent. Get these guys in there. The ghouls, as per usual, get them to attack the rear. And let's see if this Plague Stink guy is capable of taking out these Jaguar Warriors. There's quite a hefty defense force there, 50 units against 57, mostly zombies. It's not going to work with just him alone. Let's see if we can bring Nar into it. Tell him to stay behind. Ghouls down here. Ghouls attack the rear, as always. All these dead zombies way up front. We'll get these guys in on this action. And you know what? Nah, undead are expendable. Leave him there. The sky is reanimating. Hmm, okay. I'll just leave him there for now. We're getting quite a lot of units in this in this province here. So we have a crappy commander anywhere. We've got these guys sitting here. I'm going to move them over there and get them scooping up those undead. And that's about all for this turn, I think. Just to end it. All right. Unexpected events. Oh my god, yes. Now this is why right at the beginning of the game, I chose maximum chaos and maximum luck. It results in lucky events like this. 1500 gold. That's going to be a lot of temples. A handful of gems and Sculata Volturnus, whatever that is, probably an item. More pillaging, good. There was a battle. We'll see how it went. Should win, not sure. Oh yes, the ghouls circling around, perfect. Okay, so that was a solid victory. Let's see. There's a fair bit of population here. I'm going to continue banging on the Zan on the Vanier here. It's got all these provinces and they're all poorly defended. We've got a huge army here. I think it's time to start stomping these guys who dare oppose Giant Cheb. They think their 70 units can combat against all of this? I doubt it. But we might want to organize the armies a bit first. I want all of these knights to be together in one giant cavalry. Um, all of these stupid zombies together. I don't care who commands them as long as they're all together. We want them right at the front. They're going to soak up all the enemy attacks. 
the, the knights, we put them to the bottom here. Box formation is fine. But what's very important is that they attack the rear. I want them to scoop right around the side and take out the commanders, causing the entire enemy army to rout. The rest of the units, it doesn't really matter what they do. We've got enough commanders uh, guarding units, I mean. Yep, we're just going to get all these units. It's going to push straight in here. What we will do is jack up the defenses a bit here. And the reason for that is, is in case these guys, these 50 units come in and push in here while we're pushing out here. What we really need is temples. Get these guys constructing temples. You, there's already a temple here. You can continue reanimating. Warriors, here, I want a temple. I want more temples so that you can see that our influence here, our dominion keeps pushing out. Even if we don't own the provinces, our effects there will be present. We'll have the bitter cold. We'll have units of the enemy and population of the enemy dying off due to our high deaf dominion. The deaf dominion contributes to a bad income, poor supplies, and it also reduces growth in the province. In the province. So these expensive armies like these guys, they've got an upkeep. And as long as our dominion is there, reducing the resources of that province, these big armies are not going to be able to meet their upkeep requirements and they're going to begin to starve. Starved units will not fight effectively, they'll also slowly die off. So it's in our best interests to aggressively build temples to push our influence way out. Now back in the capital here, Nightworm. Get him working on a bishop. This guy, he can be set to research. Mogriku, or whatever his name is. Going to continue to assign him yet more troops. We'll set these troops up a bit. We want the knights, as always, to attack the rear. What the units in the middle do doesn't really matter. What we should give him, though, is a guard contingent. A strong guard are these, um, well, what do you call them? Triarius? Yeah, they're kind of a elite unit. Guard the commander. It's very good to have a strong unit guarding the commander because if the enemy employs our tactics of having cavalry or something that scoops around the side and attacks our commander, well, we don't want our commander to die because then our entire army will slowly dissolve into bones because the undead can only survive while there's a leader. I believe one of these attributes explains that, but it's inanimate. Hmm. Let's see. It doesn't really matter. In any case, they crumble into dust once there's no one to command them anymore. Let's check the magic item treasury. These are the items that we've got. We may as well make use of these, get them assigned to a commander, just so that he's a bit harder to kill. Continue marching him forth. Can our giant Cheb do anything interesting? Terracotta army, that's a nice one but not so necessary. We're just going to leave him on research. But next turn I might consider making a behemoth, which is a giant undead elephant. It's quite useful. Halaka, whatever your name is. Lots of undead in this province. We want these undead out and on the field. So let's get these guys moving. 
nahe dem Mühe. Let's get as many units assigned. We don't really care about organizing them nicely because we just want them on the front. This guy, Salufui, you've built the temple, good work. Now you can start reanimating. I want soulless. And this needs a defense force in case Kalem. Is this Kalem? It could be Kalem. In case they decide to come in here and start giving us trouble. Suleiman, what can you do? Ah, it's a lot of the same at the moment. Just getting guys and armies, getting them on the front. It's not a difficult game to play once you know what you're doing. The complexity in it comes down to the spells which you can use and special units like these um, Dusk Elders. In multiplayer, they can be extremely useful because they're stealthy. They can scout ahead into undead territory and they can take an army with them. So if you're playing against a real human opponent, you can assign small armies to a lot of Dusk Elders, sneak them into enemy territory unaware, and then stage very crippling attacks when they're not um, expecting these attacks. So we attacked the Vanir, Let's see how that went. It's a pretty crappy army on our part, but pretty crappy on theirs as well. Commander's getting sniped and an easy victory. Now, once the game's caught up, I don't know why there's such a long pause when the battle ends. It's quite annoying. Let's see how this battle went. Got a lot of knights, and they've got a decent force, but it's nothing too great. I'm gonna get right back there, snipe the commander. Yep, crushing victory. No prayer from them. We've got more pillaging, so we're getting more income. I'm not sure why we keep getting these crippled units everywhere. What's going on with that? It might be the effect of enemy dominion. As you can see, the enemy's dominion is in command here, not ours. So they're likely to try and attack us. Because of that, I'm likely to just pillage their province. These guys, they're coming along, along nicely. Most of our armies are maxed. We can't assign more troops to these. Can this guy take more? He can. Take some crappy zombies out, give them to him. Some normal long dead. Can anyone take a ghoul? You can, but you can't because you're overloaded with crap zombies. Now you can. Stay behind. We've got a giant blob of troops here. We've got to get organized a bit. Attack rear. These guys can come up here. These guys up here. We need some commanders. Uh, I mean guards. Get guarding. U5, here, guard. And here as well. No, he's already got guards. Okay, we're set. I'm going to also bring Holo along. He can stay behind the troops. I want Holo to basically be providing the buffs to the undead. In the events that the uh, that the enemy has priests that are going to be debuffing our troops, this guy is really encroaching as well. I'm not a fan of that, so he's going to find the fist of Cheb right in his face. You, you can get over here. You, you can continue to 
revive Dusk Elders. We need more research around here. Grave Chill, get up there. Ux, Goff, whatever your name is. Assign troops to you. Oh dear, the tedium of troop management. Get in there. You worthless rabble. I'm not going to bother giving these guys that much stuff. We just want them up the front. Get down there. Grave Shree, you found nothing. What a hero. Oh, by the way, this gray arrow, that indicates that you're sneaking. So if I was to sneak onto an enemy province, I would not capture it or attempt to attack at all. I'd just sneak on there. If I want to attack with a stealth unit, I use a control click and it turns into a red arrow. But for us, sneaking is fine. We've got a pretty nice mounted commander here. Which is interesting. I don't usually use mounted commanders to their potential. I generally leave them out back. If you were to use a unit like this to his full potential, then you'd get him equipped with lots of very good items and you'd make him charge along with his standard cavalry. The downside to that is he could die. That's always a risk you have to take when you put your commander at the front. But I'm not putting him at the front for now. We've got so many corpses here. Plague vomit. I want you up here instead. We need to get him in here, get him reanimating, so that our good prophet can continue conquering in this direction, to the east. That's it for this turn. Lots of battles that the computer has to resolve. So many events, most of it's pillaging. We do though have a battle against Teal, which I'd like to see. So Teal is attacking with a worthless army. You think you're going to win, mate? Think again. Crushed by the Knights of Cheb. Not a prayer. Though he did do an explosion at the end, which looked a bit nasty. How, did, how many units did we lose? We lost 16 units. We've got a battle in the bulwark. Let's see how that went. This could go either way. Have to remember that zombies are incredibly crap. Seems like we pulled it off. Let's quit the battle. And we also continue to summon in more Dusk Elders going to continue to make bishops. This guy's got a name that looks a bit like Yikes. You could can't pronounce it. Get in here. He can scoop up all these units. So a lot about playing Airmore is really just having guys scooping up all the dead that keep spawning in every province. So like we've got more commanders spawning in here, even more here, it's just crazy. We're drowning in undead. Let's get this guy summoning um, long dead. This guy, oh, get him like this, stay behind. In the end, you don't really have to worry too much about organizing your undead because you just have so many troops that efficiency doesn't matter too much in the end. We've almost completely killed the population of this province, which is nice. This place needs a temple. We're going to get this guy building one. Let's see what we can do with these guys. Get in there. Separate the zombies out, get them in front. And we're going to trudge forward. 
I'm going to tell the ghouls to um it's going to make them guards actually. This guy he can go here. These blokes they can get to pillaging. You you can relieve the good um profit. You up there. We got another knight commander just spawn in. We can get him down here in the capital. Grave chill. So many undead. Oh my god. So many soldiers. Yeah, yeah, just fuck me. Get in there. We may as well send them south. Our capital is overflowing with undead, all elite units. It would be nice to have a commander. In fact, the best commander of all are actually archbishops. They can command a huge amount of undead. 205, which is more than any other commander that I know of, aside from your god, of course. And they're also capable of buffing all the troops. So it's really no better commander than the bishop. So what I'm going to do is tell him to stay behind. He'll stay behind and choose whatever buffs suit him best. He's an expensive unit, so I want expensive guards guarding him. We'll get him moving south. These guys, huge army. We're going to start picking on this guy. So many troops here, it's unbelievable. This yikes guy, he can start moving down here. Uku, whatever his name is. Oh my god, it's just overflowing. Get in there. Okay, so he's maxed. Get him down there. Spittle, nice name. Do whatever. Just get him down here. And that's it for this turn. What I'm hoping to get up to in this game for you guys is I'm hoping to get to the point where the magic's a bit higher and I can show you some of the awesome rituals we can cast. So let's see, we've got a battle in the Dragon Scale Mountains. A big army from us against a very small army from them. Commander gets instantly sniped. Battle is over. A battle in Triska. We won. I won't watch that because we're drowning in battle footage anyway. This guy. Get him all assigned. This guy, Plague Vomit, I moved him up here so he can reanimate. So many corpses, 322. I'm just going to reanimate soulless just to get all those corpses used before they expire this guy can go here to assist the prophet the prophet make a temple get some guards on the province here as well The problem with this game is it wears out your mouse because you have to keep clicking. These guys are pillaging, which is nice. Plenty of unrest. Even more Mound Kings spawned in. Just got to get these guys on the front line. We get this guy attacking here. 
We'll get this guy reanimating. What can we do with these? These guys are going south. I want to take care of that blue flagged guy. Because I've got a suspicion that he is in fact the arch enemy in this campaign, the mighty AI. I know we chose Kalem for that. I'm not sure if that guy down there is Kalem, but I saw he had units that's similar to Kalem. The flying uh, harpy type blokes. In any case, I'm not a fan of the way this guy is pushing into our territory, so he's going to get a lesson. Oh my god. All these undead. Oh boy. Get Angmar over here. Get Fetid up here. These guys. You can go up here. Grave chill. Oh man, so many troops. Oh boy. You can see that why this game got the plentiful minion score. There's nothing like it really. There's no other 4x game that lets you command this amount of troops. Got enough for a archbishop again. Good. So pillaging this province into the ground is going to make it very unattractive to be reconquered. These guys, I want you to start striking a blow here. Yeah, I think that's good enough for this turn. How's our research going? We're almost at level 5 enchantment. Can we do a global enchantment yet? Does not seem like it. What I'd like to get towards is stuff like... Where is it? Hmm, it might be way at the end. Ah, uh, here's a good one. Ghost Ship Amada. It's a global enchantment and it will awaken the dead Admiral Torgen. Torgren, or whatever his name is. And every few turns, this guy is going to go with a random huge army of undead sailors. He's just going to lay waste to a random enemy coastal province. Anything that he pillages goes straight to your treasury. Another good one is... Haunted forests, if you have nature gems. I don't. It'll cause vines to emerge of anyone that dies in the god's um, dominion. So basically, whenever you do a battle and the enemy troops die, or your troops die, if they're living, they're going to come back as mannequin. And mannequin are like um, skeletons, but they're sort of, they've got vines that have grown around them. So they're kind of like viney skeletons and their attack has a chance to paralyze the enemy. Another good one. There was a really good one in Dominions for them trying to find. It's called the Sands of Time. Is that here? Maybe they got rid of it in Dominions 5. Hmm. That'd be a shame. I'm not seeing it. Either I'm blind or they got rid of it. What a shame. In any case, stuff like the Ziz will be good for us. The Ziz is a giant rotting uh, griffin, basically. Another good one will be reanimate archers, because we need some archery units in our armies. We don't really have access to that. The Ritual of Rebirth is a nice one. It allows us to bring back any dead hero as a zombie. No, sorry. It brings any dead hero back as a mummy. And he keeps all of his afflictions, so if the minion, if the hero has stuff like a missing arm, he's going to come back without that arm. But he's also going to come back as a mummy, so he's going to command a huge amount of undead. And on top of that, he's also going to be surrounded by a plague 
and the plague is going to um, cause all kinds of problems for the living units. It's going to disease them, demoralize them. Diseased units are going to die every turn. And they'll also accumulate afflictions. So formerly healthy troops are going to start losing limbs, losing, um, losing their arms. I said losing limbs, didn't I? Yes, yeah, so they're not going to be able to use their weapons. So it won't be graphically represented in, in the game because the graphics are simple. But in terms of combat, is going to be the equivalent of soldiers sort of flailing at you with stumpy arms with no weapons in their hands. And you can imagine how ineffective that's going to be. Get this guy moved over here. I think that's pretty much it for this turn. These guys. I'm going to get them pushing even further into this guy's territory. Yeah, that's good for now. Kamul. Kamul's got nothing. He's going here to collect all the undead that our good priest here has been raising. Let's end it. See how long I've been playing. Might have been almost an hour. I'll continue on for a full hour. Let's see. We've revived the Archbishop. Good. There's been several battles. Let's hope we win most of them. Let's check this one. We're attacking Calum. Ah, it is Calum. So this guy with the frosty flag, he's the strongest AI on the map. I was hoping to encounter him later, but hopefully we can bring him down anyway. We've got the numbers, but quality is not on our side. However, it does appear that we're winning. Yep, we did it. Good. The next one, we're against the teal guy. He's brought forth all kinds of animals against us. Serpents. They've got a um, poisonous attack, presumably. But poison is no good against the undead. And they're outnumbered anyway, so this should be a fairly easy victory. Yep, crushed. We're continuing to fight Kalem here. I think our armies are basically way better than his at this point. He might be getting hit in the ass by another enemy down south that we can't see. Which is generally what it indicates if um, an enemy that you're fighting isn't really putting up a fight back. Because as you can see, this is just a complete curb stomp here. This guy's got nothing. And if he has continues to have nothing, then we're just going to march straight to his capital with this huge undead legion. And just take him out. Oh. Going to give going to give the bishop all the good units and the mound king who's a lot weaker can take the crappier ones. Going to organize this force a bit. Zombies in front, meat shields, guys to the side, attack rear. That's about it. These guys, put them up here. Now you lot can continue pushing in this direction. These guys have done well. I'm going to um, make these guys deal with these independents here. Grave Chill and Gifferin. Not even going to bother organizing them. They can go straight here and start taking these undefended provinces. These guys have done enough pillaging. The population's basically dead, if we're honest about it. 97 people is basically a dead country. 
So let's get going. Start pushing on these guys. Falsley is our new bishop. I actually want to turn him into a commander. So I'm going to sit him here. He can reanimate. I'll get him reanimating lictors. You can only make one lictor at a time, but they're kind of an advanced unit and they don't spawn naturally like all these other units. I haven't got any that I can show you at this point in time, but next turn we might have one. This guy, Nightworm. Let's start getting him making some behemoths. This is going to contribute to the advanced army of undead, which Foulslay will command. Just have to make sure that Bane Wound, he can go somewhere where there's a lot of undead with no leader. Potentially here. Angmar. get moving. You can attack these guys actually. Spittle and Manhate. Ah, oh, there's basically nothing to command here. I'll just get them. Oh, I can't even pillage, there's no population. I'm just going to bring them on shore. I think that's about all we can do here. Nah, no, what can you do? I'll just leave them there. These guys they can stay where they are. This guy, we've built the temple. We've searched the province of Grave Tree. We'll go up here. I'll send this guy up here as well. The prophet. He can take over all these troops. Most of them anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to send these guys as a blob. They can attack Vanya. That's about it. No, not yet. I'm going to continue pushing forward with these guys straight into Calum's territory. To set up some defenses. Certainu, just assign him some troops and then get him pushing in here. This doesn't look defended. It's about it for this turn. Yep, let's end it. So I'm hoping what you're slowly beginning to see here is that Dominions 5 is a very complicated game, especially when it comes to the powers that your Dominion have, has. Even when it comes to individual troops, they're going to have all these kind of abilities. They've got different resistances, different pros and cons. Commanders can accept items. Items can be crafted by you, and they can be made ridiculously strong. There's kinds of like unique artifacts which you can build. And it, with the right kind of hero, with the right setup of artifacts, that hero is going to become like a one-man army, basically. Oh, that was interesting. So we fought a big enemy army there, and... The elephants came in, basically crushed all the zombies we had, which is fine because that's what they're there for. Meanwhile, the knight slooped around the back, killed the commander, and it was game over. This could be interesting. There's a lot of elephants here and we might get completely trampled. Okay, yep, we lost this one. This is why Caelum is an asshole to fight. He's got big armies of flying units. They're capable of being told to attack the rear most enemies. And since they're flying, they basically just fly there pretty much instantly, snipe your commander. So it can be a real challenge to fight them. Let's see if we prevail in this fight. Oh, it's 
Oh, it's, it could go either way. These are very weak militia, but the zombies are so crap. Hmm. We've routed. So now things are starting to heat up for us. Calum has decided enough is enough. And he's decided he's going to start pushing back. Oh no. Oh no. The prophet, the prophet of Cheb, brutally slaughtered by these infernal Van of Vanheim. These guys have glamour, and it basically means that they're they've got themselves, and it has also got and it's all, they've also got an illusion of themselves. So when your units are trying to attack them, there's a chance they're constantly hitting the wrong unit. They're a big pain in the ass to fight. They've also got solar weapons, which is going to be dealing fire damage to our undead, which is never nice. So now it looks like we're starting to get some pushback from our enemies here. We've been trampling all over them up until now, but now they're starting to push back. We lost our profit, which is a shame. The prophet is the second strongest priest after your god, even stronger than the bishops. So for the purpose of spreading dominion, incredibly important. But it's not like our units aren't replaceable. I'm going to make Foul Slay our new prophet. Can I do that? I think I have to wait a while. But he has been reanimating lictors. Let's see. Do we have a lictor? We've got the behemoth. This is the behemoth I was talking about. So you've seen the effectiveness of our enemy elephants against our troops. Well, our elephants are undead. So that means they're even cooler. They've got the fear ability. So more chance of the enemy routing. Yeah, they've got a few other things. Nothing much useful. But I'm, what I'm trying to see here is, do we have a lictor? Um, can't see past all the other units here. There he is. The lictor. So, he's an abnormally strong infantry unit. But... The real benefit comes from the fact that he's sacred, which means he's a kind of elite trooper that's more devoted to the God's cause than any of your other troops. And if you remember, right at the beginning when we were creating our God, we maxed out our death magic and we took that fear ability. So this means that, I think it was fear that we took, pretty sure it was fear. So the way I can check here. Hmm. Anyway, I'm fairly sure that we took the fear. So that means that every elector that we have in an army is going to have a chance to rout the enemy, which is incredibly strong. So basically one of these little guys is equivalent to an elephant, if not better. Foul Slay needs a bodyguard contingent. That can be this. God. All you guys here. Because these guys have morale, unlike normal undead, they kind of fall into the ghoul category. It begins to be important how we distribute our battalions here. For normal undead, like these guys, they don't care. You see the morale is 50. They really don't give a crap about how split up they are, what formation they have. All of these formations have a, an effect on troop morale. And generally, troops feel safest in a box, and they feel most exposed in a line. And you can see that our commander, in fact, all of our undead commanders, with the exception of our god himself, who can command five battalions, you see, zero out of five. This guy can only command one battalion. 
without taking a morale penalty. So what we're going to have to do if we care about our troops at all is we're going to have to start combining. So if we combine here, we gain more morale. What's a big shame is that we can't put these guys with him, but we can combine those. So these guys are now only slightly unhappy as opposed to being very unhappy, which is fine. Better than nothing. They should hold the line anyway. These guys are elite troops. 18 morale is pretty high. Minus 2, 16 morale. So it's going to take a bit of a beating for them to retreat in any case. What we might do is we might get this huge army here in a line. Uh, double line is good. Put it way out in front. Anyway, we've got more gems for whatever reason. So what I'm going to do is I want more bishops, actually more archbishops. Bane wound. Oh, you can go here. Kamul. Overflowing of troops. Need these guys on the front lines. Get in there. So as always, it's just a bit of monotonous troop management. Get these guys down here. Um, what else can we do? Mogmol. You can take all the troops out of this province. Bring them back to the capital. Got enough defenses here to make it difficult for the Vanier guys to push in. We lost this province to the Vanier. We need to take it back. And Nas, the guy to do it. Actually, he's not because he's kind of crap. But hopefully, through some quantity, he'll be able to succeed. Bane wound get somewhere with his troops here. These guys, this is a good army. It's led by the bishop. It's huge. It's about 200 troops. We're going to push in here where we failed. We might lose this province, but we'll just take it back again next turn. Grave chill in this guy. I want you guys to push here. Pillaging in this province has about reached its usefulness. There's only a thousand people left. So I'm going to do is commence the siege on this fortress here. Which will be the next thing you guys will get to see in these playthroughs is how sieging works in the game. Hmm. It's about it for this turn. And I believe we're approaching an hour. Yeah, we're about done. I think what I'll do is I'll stop it at this point. We might, we'll watch these last battles and I'll stop it. Let's see how we went here. Yeah, easy win. I like the environments in this game, I gotta say. I know it's all simplistic graphics, but I know that bothers some people, but it really doesn't bother me for whatever reason. Now this could be a tough fight. We've got Griffins, which won't pose that much of a problem to um, our Knights, but they could give our standard troops a hard time. But I'm worried about these Snow Apes. Actually, our undead are resistant to snow anyway and cold, so they've all got resistance to cold, so I think we'll be fine there. Speed it up. Ah, yes. No chance. Crushed. 
It's a great help to have the priest there buffing all the troops. See how we went in these other battles. This should be an easy victory. Yep. Easy win. What about this one? These guys are deceiving. They do a lot of damage, these ichthyids. Oh shit. <laughs> we only had one bloke on the field. Instant defeat. Jeez. What about here? Vanir again. I keep calling them Vanir, but they're actually Vanheim. Oh, this isn't good. Commander's sniped. Oh. Oh dear. So Vanir are beginning Vanheim are beginning to become a problem. Let's see how he went in this battle here. So we're defeating the field army, but there's a fortress on the map. And that fortress is going to have to be taken after this battle is won, presuming we win it. We've got heaps of banishments going, which is really nasty. Probably lost a lot of troops to banishment just then. Hmm, what a shame. Let's see for a minute just how much we lost. Go back to the messages. Ah, not too many. We lost about a third of the army. So now our guys are on siege. After a set amount of turns, they'll break down the enemy's defenses. And at that point, we'll be able to storm the, the um, castle. Now, storming isn't trivial. Um, oftentimes, you'll take the enemy's uh, province and sit in it like this for ages. You'll wait and you'll wait. You'll starve all the, um, all the resources out of the province. And there'll only be a few defenders left. But the walls are formidable. And unless you've got things like ghosts that can just go straight through the walls, you're going to have a crunch right at the um, enemy's gates. And it's basically a big funnel and it will um, make short work of lesser troops. If the enemy has a line of elite troops plugging that funnel and it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation, you lose all the advantages that you normally have with an army like ours, which relies on quantity over quality for the most part. We've got a few really elite units like those Knights of the Sepulchre. These guys, they're very strong, but um, for the most part, we're dealing with long dead, which are dealing decent damage, but only have a handful of hit points. And of course, crappier units that just are inferior to what the enemy has. So we rely on quantity. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop it here. I hope you enjoyed. We're starting to progress into the more complicated parts of the game now. Our magic is coming along nicely. Once we start getting into these higher level spell um, categories, I'll begin to show you stuff like the more interesting undead units, like liches. We've got stuff like hidden underneath and hidden in snow. Basically, you cast this on a snowy mountain or something, and you get a huge army of um, ancient undead soldiers, and they come with ancient mages, ancient commanders, and ancient warriors. There's a few variations of this. We've got Hidden in Sand, which, redu which produces an army which looks a bit like um, the Tomb Kings, like sort of Egyptian style. And then we've also got Hidden Underneath, which produces sort of um, cave type undead. 
We've got the Amorian Legion, which will summon a um, a big legion of the elite Roman soldiers, which is so much better than the standard undead, which we mostly have to rely on. We've got the Lich, lich Craft I mentioned. And once we get into Conjuration, we can start summoning some really interesting things like ghosts. What's this one? A handful of wailing ladies. Um, what else can we do? Elementals. Yeah, here's our ghosts here. We've got an ether gate. It opens a, a gateway to the astral plane and it summons in a group of ether warriors. Ether warriors are kind of like spirit warriors, I guess. They're heavily armored though, and they're pretty badass. Great lamentation. We can get a legion of lictors. We can get the eater of the dead. The eater of the dead is basically like a big blob of corpses that you summon. And um, every time you win a battle, it grows a bit bigger. And if you are careless and you allow it to continue growing and growing, it will eventually go out of control and it becomes a rogue unit on the map. It can be a useful kind of wild card if you produce it near the enemy and it will go to the enemy provinces and it will basically defeat whatever defenders are there and it will sit there. It will consume all the population of the province until the province's population is zero. Then it will move to the next province. It can be a handful to deal with. The King of Banefires is a nice one. What do you basically get is a big blob of um, unholy fire. And it's a very powerful commander, but it's also a very powerful standalone unit. It's got powerful fire magic, powerful death magic. You can equip it really well and use it as one of those one man army kind of deals. Another really useful spell at level nine is the Tartarian Gate. And basically what you get from this Tartarian Gate is you summon in a previous god that's been imprisoned there by the last god. And this guy is basically insane. And you can, with another spell, promote him into being a commander and he is a good commander, but he's an insane commander. So sometimes instead of fighting, you'll get a funny message like, this commander has decided to just go to a wedding today, or he's decided to hold a party, or he's decided to even start pillaging your own province. He's decided to demolish your, your temple or your, um, your fortress or whatever. Sometimes they can run amok. So generally I don't promote these guys into commanders, I just leave them as rather powerful um, standard units. So anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'm going to save it here. If you continue to enjoy the campaign and you want to see more of Dominions, I'm happy to continue making these videos. They're very easy for me to make. I just sit down, start playing, start flapping the gums, the words start coming out and then yeah, I can do this pretty easily. No real editing required. Have a nice week wherever you are. Hope to see you again.